Hello and welcome to God's Business. My name is Amanda Barely. I'm here with Nicholas Fairley. And obviously Nicholas is the host, but I kind of wanted to take this over because I thought it would be really cool to get his personal testimony and how he came to know God, because I think it's just like super, super powerful. Um, and so we're gonna do it in an interview format because it's more exciting. And also we want to keep this a little bit shorter because if he could just tell his testimony, it could be like three hours long because there's just so much to it. I literally um, did it at an event yeah. and it was like <laughs> two hours, <laughs> two hours. And I left out like the majority, it was just one like nine month phase of my life. that was about yeah. two hours. So this would be abbreviated. If it's something that you guys want to go deeper on, I'm happy to go through it. I don't even talk that much on the show. I bring in experts and other people and done, done some solo episodes, but really it's bringing the very best people that are merging God and business together, the best business tactics, the best things that would help create what we call four dimensional businessman. And that's mm -hmm. what we like to do. So I'm yeah. happy to be here. This was your idea. I have no clue what we're going to go over, Yay! but I know how to talk about myself. So it's not a big deal. Yes. So welcome to the show. If you're listening on YouTube, make sure to subscribe. If you are on the podcast, also make sure to subscribe and leave a rate and review. Yep. Um, okay, so let's get started. So we'll just kind of start at the point where you're searching for more and you're around 16 years old. At this time, you were addicted to video games. Um, and what happened after that? This is cool because you might get even a better timeline too. I, first off, my parents split up when I was young. Yep. That caused me to have some controversy. Like I had a stepmom. I ended up getting a stepdad later, but my mom had to go through the dating phase again. So like I had lots of anxiety in third grade. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I had lots of anxiety in, in preschool. Like I couldn't transition from the playground to eat lunch. I remember freaking out every time. So I'm so proud of Kingston. And then once I ate lunch, I'd feel good again. Mm -hmm. But I get diarrhea all the time. Just like felt terrible. Yeah. I would have to like, like eat packs of Tums, which was just so weird. So third grade, I went through that. Fourth grade kind of like transition over going to my father's house a lot more. But it really led up to this key point where I was kind of pursuing my dreams, trying to do well in school. Didn't have the approval of my father. Really ran into video games, gained 60 pounds. Stopped talking to my father. And then kind of got to this point where like around almost 17 years old is when I was like, I met that boxer that helped me lose weight and I lost 60 pounds. That's what got me to like start connecting my father again. I got my license, I could drive. And so like I could leave my dad's house whenever I wanted. I didn't feel stuck. So there's lots of dynamics there that are like an hour or more to unpack as well. But that led me to this phase where I lost the weight. And it was weird because at this point when I lost the weight, I was playing less games. Mm -hmm. Cause I could go do other things. I started surfing a ton and physical activity. Whereas before, I was literally playing games like from 3 p.m. when I got Which home from game school. Was this? World of Warcraft. World of Warcraft. Very like, godly Christian game. No. <laughs> and so, like, I'd play from 3 p.m. till 12:30 in the morning every single night. That was what was required of me in the in the game. That was my commitments that I had made to my my peeps there. And I'd wake up at 5:15 in the morning, so I'd yes. sleep from 12:30 in the morning to 5:15. Wake up, go to school, and then. When I got towards my senior year, which I didn't play as much then, I got off school at like 12, 15. So it was like lots of time to play. On the weekends, I would often play from Friday night until Sunday night mm -hmm. without stopping. Yeah. At all. Like no breaks, no naps, nothing. I would just Friday night, red bullet all the way till Sunday night. And then what happened? What? Then what happened? After the video games, then when, what did you get into? Yeah, I, I, it was mostly after I lost the weight. Yeah. So I was searching. I recognized that I lost this weight. I tried to go to parties and like do what other people did. I was always so driven to be the best at something that I went from motocross to video games. So I like didn't want to like just be a loser. But it felt like I already lost this weight. I accomplished something and I still feel like something's missing. Mm -hmm. And so the only thing I had seen was like paranormal stuff, movies, people. So I was like, is there something bigger out there? And if there was, what would that do for me? And so I got into Ouija yeah. boards, started doing tons of things. That's where we started, was like Ouija boards, calling in spirits, good spirits. They acted lazy. The Bible talks a lot about demons disguising themselves as angels of light. So we just started asking for the worst spirits. It's like, what are the worst ones? 
We'd go to grave sites, random mountaintops, people's abandoned homes, looking for where's the strongest, craziest spirit that would do the craziest things. Mm-hmm. And this would go to kids would come over to my house. They couldn't call their parents. They would get demons that would call their phone over and over again from random yeah. numbers. And a lot of people don't think that's real. It's like, what? Like, who is that on the other line? Like, can demons manifest themselves <coughs> physically? I've heard demons physically, like audible sounds. People are in my house and there's there's no one there. And my brother heard them too. But for you, like, these kids were freaking out. Yeah, like we'd always have our core group of people that come. But we would have sometimes a dozen to 40 people at my house doing upstairs, downstairs, all trying to communicate with spirits. If someone would knock on a door, a certain beat, they would knock back. They knew the answers to everything. I mean, think about it. They had been around since, you know, Adam. Yeah. Right? And it's like they had watched, like they have, they don't die and come back to life. So they had watched humans and lineages and families forever. So they know a lot about people's families, what they do, what where they go. Yeah. So that was very fascinating, right? It was like, we just thought God was weak and these and demonic forces were strong. I think we started calling them demons. We mostly call it bad spirits. But even like when we talk about God, the conviction of who people had a, a thought of who God was, because if you were to call a demon God, they'd probably like it, right? Like that's what, that's what Satan wanted or mm-hmm. specifically Lucifer. But it's like when we would say God, the demons would actually freak out. And the reason they would freak out is because I think the conviction that we had of who God was. And so we weren't allowed to talk about God. And, and there was like core things that like but really... Jesus too. You couldn't say the name of Jesus. No, no, no. Definitely not. And what else? Well, there's just other things that had happened that really led us to Jesus, but we never really noticed it. Like we just... Mm-hmm. All we wanted to do is see things fly across my room. Like we'd see water bottles fly. Like we'd see... Uh, again, the, the weird thing was like the no, inability to call people and getting tons of calls. Demons would communicate over the phone, so physical audible voices through the phone. And what did that one demon tell that kid? Yeah, so this was a day when basically I'd go to all the Mormons, Christians, Catholics. I didn't know a ton of Muslims, but I'd go to any of them and be like, hey, like, I know you believe in God, but like, if you actually want to see supernatural things, like, this is real because mm-hmm. your stuff isn't. And it was true that they weren't experiencing that because they would come over to my house. So this one particular day we got the Ouija board, we got all this stuff and I'm trying to do all this stuff at someone else's house, but it's not working. What's Mm -hmm. crazy is that was actually a Christian home. And so, (laughs) yeah, which was interesting. There's power in prayer, praying over your home. Yeah. Cause we had in your belief system and all of that. And and this really is a testimony of the power of God because people think like demonic forces are so strong and they're being oppressed and, and, we had literally spent like nine months, like every single week throughout the entire weekend, like focusing on this core area of summoning these spirits. So we had like created like a place kind of like if you would in worship, but for demonic stuff. So we go to my house. I'm like, come to my house. This is like where we know it's going to happen. Nothing's happening. And after a while, someone calls my mom's home phone. Yeah. And my mom saw all this stuff too. Mm -hmm. So like she would know all these kids would know. Um, it called out even her friends at a party one time and all this stuff. And so something calls my mom's home phone, which no one would know, not even the same district. Like it's like pretty far away from my school. And it says, let me talk to Mario. And I was sitting there like Mario, like, okay. Mario Luigi. Yeah. Yeah. We just watched the Mario movie. (laughs) So I hand the phone to Mario. I'd love to hear him talk about it now. And he drops the phone and it said, it said, take off my necklace. So he pulls out this Catholic rosary where it has Jesus on the cross on his necklace. And we were like, bro, take it off. Like we didn't think about Jesus on the cross and none of this can work when this is yeah. here. We're just like, bro, we want to see this. Like, let's go. Yeah. So he takes off his cross and boom, everything starts working. Mm-hmm. Like the, the spirits are able to communicate with everyone. They're strong again. And one of the things about that that I think people should take into consideration is that God is moved by faith. Right, pleased by faith. Anything done apart from faith is a sin Mm -hmm. and obedience, right? You look at Abraham and Isaac and you look at even Saul on the opposite side where he wasn't obedient. Demonic force is very similar, but it's out of fear and obedience. Mm -hmm. So fearful, tyrannical obedience increases their force in your life. 
Mm-hmm. So when you're afraid and you make decisions out of fear that they want you to make and you're obedient to that voice, that is where it's like, boom, bigger stronghold, boom, bigger yeah. stronghold. And we had just been like welcoming that out of fear, like complete fear. And that's why a lot of people think like, oh, demons only exist at night. Like this is what I thought. I was like, spirits only come out at night in the morning when it's light out and we're not yeah. afraid it won't work. Oh, it still worked. It was not good. I was like the first day I was like, this is not good. And so we were gripped by fear. We were seeing power, seeing supernatural, yeah. gripped by fear. Uh, we had another one where constantly would tell us to do things and we were afraid that we were going to die or something and be obedient. So, and it could be small things like go up to the fourth stair on your staircase and like sit there. And we're like, oh my gosh, we're so fearful. We'd be obedient yeah. and, and it'd be in, like a stronger force would come in. Well, we went upstairs. My mom randomly, for no good reason, had a picture of Jesus on the wall, Jewish Jesus. And it was up in her office and it said, go up into her office and it got ripped off the wall. Mm-hmm. And we were like, whoa, that's cool. Yeah. Like, that's pretty awesome. So those are three core things. Not talking about yeah. God and Jesus, not talking about or Jesus being ripped off the wall for no good reason, and a Catholic rosary that paralyzed the entire environment of our place. But it really led me to this place where I, I remember sitting there my on actually those stairs in the middle of the day one time, and I was like, wow, there's a completely different realm out there that people aren't seeing, they don't know exists. Mm-hmm. And I do, it was almost like this paralyzing reality of like, whoa, like yeah. this is out there. Yeah. And that's what really led me to like also showing how a godly influence can be so influential. It got to the point where I was gripped by fear. Yeah. I basically got Which told, is the spirit of witchcraft because they're manipulating you. Complete manipulation. 100%. And you, you feel like you're powerful because you know things or you see things. But you have no power. You have no control no. over anything. You have no freedom. And so it got to the point where I finally, I liked this girl in school. And I was like, oh, what, what could I say to, to have her like me? And so I started asking the demons, like, what do I do? Where is she at? They would tell us where people were at, who they were with, what they were thinking. Yep. And it got to the point where uh, it told me what to say. And she responded, I love you. Literally. It was like, whoa. And then, it, and then they cracked down. I thought this was cool. Because Lucifer is obviously the actual name of, of real Satan. Yes, before he fell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but that's his like actual name. Like, yeah, yeah. Like Satan can be any devil. And so like, yeah. the, I wouldn't have known that. So I couldn't have made it up. And so it was like, uh, if you tell anyone what we told you, we'll kill your friends, family, and then you. Lucifer himself will. So I'm freaking out. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell anyone about this. So it got to the point where I ended up going surfing one day with this kid who just seemed different. He was someone I always surfed with. He was kind of a jerk. Not that cool. Like he, he just was a, a, ver- a kid that would do a lot of bad things. Mm-hmm. Break things, just kind of all over the place wild. And he was very different. Like just felt like he's not really doing anything bad. And I, that kind of impacted me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, huh, there's something different about that kid. Like he's just not doing the things that I try to push him to do bad things. It felt like it contradicted me, but I was interested in yeah. it. So one day I'm smoking hookah with a kid and I'm like, I, what a loser thing to do. I'm like, this is dumb. I'm like, but that kid, he seemed pretty cool. So let me yeah. give him a call and maybe we can hang out. So I leave that guy's house. I'm on my way to the boba tea place, Rubble, yeah, yeah. that I went to every single day. And he's like, hey, man, yeah, I'm on my way to a small group. And I'm like, I knew he played drums. So I thought maybe it's a band. I didn't know what a small group was. I didn't know mm-hmm. it was a church thing. And he's like, no, dude, like it's a church thing. You don't want to come. I was known as the demon kid in my school. Yeah. Like, no one wanted to, no one would have ever thought I'd go to a church thing. Which is so crazy because like me in high school, I don't think anyone was verbally like doing this stuff. Like we would, we never called any kid in my high school a demon kid. Like we had the people who were like doing bad things, but not. And I was like a cool kid. Like yeah. it wasn't like I was like a weird kid. I was talented. I did a lot of skateboarding and surfing and I was just looking for more. And I was like, bro, I'll come. Like where are you guys meeting? It was exactly where I was driving, same place. And so I go there, there's three kids there, and they're talking about peep, this, this book that they're reading about miracles, which their church didn't believe in miracles. Not like that, like that God paid for the price for everyone's healing. And they're reading a book about some people in Africa that were Down syndrome got delivered of a spirit and weren't Down syndrome anymore. So mm-hmm. they were like, I'm so sorry, this is scaring you. And I'm like, I'm not afraid. Like I, I talk to demons, like this is par for the course kind of thing. And they were like, whoa. So I, I ended up leaving there and I was like, hey, yeah, thanks. I kind of acted like I knew like knew everything. Yeah. But throughout that week, I had less desire to sin. 
I just felt like more conviction. I was just like, hmm. I had more desire to serve. I actually held a party at my house. Everyone's smoking weed, doing different things. I wasn't. I was serving everyone food the whole time. I was like so excited to give people stuff. And then I got this overwhelming desire to read the Bible front to back and just figure out why people read the same book over and over again their whole life. I just thought that was so weird. And at this point, you'd only been to church a few times with like other friends, right, growing up? I mean, yeah, if you could call it that. Like I'd go to a Sunday school when I was needed to and I wouldn't listen, don't remember any of it. Sat in a service where an alcoholic would talk about how he was an alcoholic or something. And I was like, okay, like, but those maybe two times I can remember. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And so I never really cared. But even in fourth grade, I remember coming home from school and they had a skateboard Bible and I was skateboarding home. Yeah. They gave it to me. skateboard camp, right? No, no, this was just me skateboarding home from, from, from school and someone had a van with Bibles in it. That's amazing. So I grabbed it and I was pumped. And my mom was like, oh, that's really difficult to read. I can't read it front to back. You have to like jump from section to section. and It's not like a regular book. I was like, that sounds really confusing. I guess I won't read it. But it was like a seed. Yeah. Like I remember that as a seed. One of the only seeds. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the other ones, my friend's mom was Christian. We would skateboard outside the church. He wouldn't go, but his mom would. So she'd always listen to Christian music. Mm-hmm. Same with my stepmom with my sister. She'd like, that was all the baby song, Christian songs, but like, Mm -hmm. they didn't mean anything to me. So at this point, I have this desire and they tell me, hey, if you come back on the next Wednesday to the Bible study or the small group, we'll give you a Bible. Mm -hmm. I didn't know like every Bible was free and every hotel had it. So I just thought, Mm -hmm. I don't have money to buy a Bible. So that sounds good. I don't even know which one to buy. Where do you even buy a Bible? So I ended up hanging out with this kid more that week to the point where I'm like, I I noticed that he had Christian friends. So I started hanging out with him. Mm -hmm. He had Christian friends. I literally stopped hanging out with a lot of my friends even that week. And after I got saved, I literally, you can tell my friends are upset about it probably still to this day. I just like instantly switched friends because I was like, I want more of this. Yeah. And I would go to influence my friends, but I wouldn't hang out with them the same because they would do all the same junk. And I'd sit there like on the opposite side, just like, no, that's not what God wants, like whatever. And so I, I'm sitting there and one day I'm in a, a, it's like a ravine, like a kind of a sewer, but for skateboarding. Mm -hmm. no water in it skateboarding with this kid that was newly saved that had impacted me and I'm like hey I got to confess to you something something that someone said I couldn't say tell anyone so I tell him the thing that Lucifer himself said I couldn't say and he's like we're all gonna die like he's freaking out he was like didn't know anything (laughs) this is what happens when you tell a new Christian about this stuff (laughs) yeah because they wouldn't know and so the youth pastor, which is a great friend of mine that was my best man of a wedding, Spencer, he came over. He's one year older than me. So it was like, <laughs> you know, he's basically not, he's the youth pastor, but he's just a youth. He comes over, prays for me, and even then I felt something release off me. I remember I was like, this is cool. And I was just like, something came off of me. And then they're like, yeah, come Wednesday. You know, like nothing else. Yeah. So I come back Wednesday and they're like, you want to accept Jesus? And I was like, yeah, sounds good. And so they lead me through the prayer. I instantly am like, I'm different, different person, different heart, burned everything. And the next morning I showed up at 5 a.m. for their prayer group that they just started for high school kids. Mm -hmm. Next Tuesday, there was the men's group for the prayer group, 5 to 7 a.m. as well. And just like never missed it. That's that's all the world that that's everything that it became about. And and everything shifted for me in that moment. I remember being frustrated at the Christians and stuff, just being like, yo, like, why didn't you tell me this earlier? Yeah, like, why didn't you tell me that the name of Jesus is more powerful than anything that we were seeing? Why didn't you show me that people mm-hmm. there's signs, wonders, and miracles, people getting healed, people encountering mm-hmm. God, having visions, knowing things about people in the future? So it gave me this yeah. confident expectation that angels, the Spirit of God, and God Himself would and speak they, to the His gifts people. Of the Spirit. Yeah, like, why if the demons would speak to people out of hatred, why wouldn't God speak out of love? Yeah, and I started recognizing that there was a way to. That, that I had an expectation of what God was willing to do on the earth mm-hmm. because I saw what Satan was willing to do on the earth just to separate people from God. Yeah. And that was such a big deal to me. And I also saw the power of like God in these tiny forms would paralyze an environment that was mm-hmm. demonically like strong. And yeah. and I, I was able to see, oh my goodness, this entire time, these things were so weak mm-hmm. and God was so strong especially because God knows the beginning from the end. He's outside of all time and space. And the demonic knew about the past. They could try to project in the future, 
But if they could project in the future, they wouldn't have killed Jesus on the cross as a sinless man, <laughs> literally redeeming all of humanity yeah. back to him. Got raised from the dead. Yeah. They wouldn't like, have done it. Yeah. Like, if they could see in the future. Mm-hmm. But God, like, played that out so perfectly well. And, and you know, that's the long short of that, that nine-month span that I went through of demonic stuff, crazy things to Mm -hmm. being set free and being a completely different person. Yeah. It's so, it's so amazing because, you know, as you guys know, we are married. I grew up in a Christian home and my parents, from the day I was born, they said that they started praying over my spouse. So like your radical testimony of going from demon kid to on fire Christian is because of people were praying for you and it there's not anyone too far gone and that's why like I commented on this guy's Instagram the other day and he was just like he's fallen away from the faith and he's just like anti-god anti-jesus and I'm just like hey bro watch out I'm praying for you like you're gonna come back to the truth and because I know the power of prayer like I know that when people are standing in the gap for someone else, like they're just, there's a target on their back. And so you just had like a target on your back yeah. of, of getting saved. And it was just so easy. It was like the Holy Spirit convicted you to want to follow him. And I think like just a couple takeaways, like as Christians, it's like, listen, us living our life and embodying the Holy Spirit and walking this life out will convict other people. And the people that are ready to know God, know Jesus, like you'll be able to reap the harvest. You know what I mean? Like that kid newly saved was able to lead you to and he Jesus. he never told me anything about it. And other people prayed for you, planted seeds, but they never saw that harvest. They were just like, oh crap, like I gave these Bibles away. Or I'm praying for this person, but like, is it working? It's like, no, be patient because these are just seeds and they're getting watered. And the Christians and weren't eventually... impressive to me either. Like I knew pastor kids, any of that, but that kid didn't even tell me about Jesus. Yeah. Like he just was, I could tell there was something different about him. And when you said there's people out there, the people that struggle with this the most, like no, no one's too far gone, right? You said? Yeah. Is the complacent people that think they have it all figured out. Like you look at when Jesus came is the people that were like, we know exactly how God works and exactly how it's going to go. I'm fine in my current vehicle. I'm trying nothing else different in my life. Like I'm not mm-hmm. searching at all. I'm just dead set on this one thing. And it's the people that are searching, like the people out there that are like, oh, I'm going to do psychedelics or I'm going to go on this trip or I'm going to try this thing or try to fulfill it with this. Yeah. They're trying different things to find this God's shaped hole to fill themselves. So for them, it's so easy. The most far gone is the most easy to lead to Jesus Mm -hmm. because the most far gone are searching for things to find Jesus or to fill that hole. So if they're already searching, it's great. It was all the people, the Gentiles, the people that, uh, the Jewish people that were completely off the rails, that were hurt, that were broken, that were searching, I need help. Those people encountered Jesus. Mm -hmm. It was the religious people that didn't. And so there's also forms of that of other religions. There's other forms of that and just people that are set in their way. I'm not open to anything. I won't Mm -hmm. hear anything. But it's those people that are searching the people it calls like the most lost people. To me, I'm like, no, they're just, they're literally searching. I was the most lost person in my high school that became the most on fire because technically I was just searching for something bigger than myself. The purpose that goes back to the business stuff I talked about. I built the business when I was 12 and was like, but why? Why the money? Why more business? Why work harder? Why? Like I was searching Mm -hmm. for like, why do this? What's the purpose? What's the purpose of life? What's the reason I'm going to get good grades? Or what's the purpose I'm going to have a career? And so Mm -hmm. I was searching and that made me the demon kid. Mm -hmm. And I was the perfect person to talk to. Yeah. No, I I love that. So, so powerful. And like the power of the Holy Spirit and knowing the gifts, like that's, you got to see the darkness. So when you became a Christian, you already knew like, that the spiritual realm is actually more real than the earthly. And so you just operated out of that immediately. Like you knew, you didn't question anything in the Bible because you're like, this is what the Bible says. If Jesus did it and we're supposed to do even greater things than he did and he sent his Holy Spirit, then like, 
we should be operating in this power. And, um, you know, growing up in a Christian home, I saw glimpses of it, but not that much until I was 15 and I got prophesied over. And so, you know, Paul writes that we should earnestly desire the gifts of the spirit because these are the things that lead people to Jesus. Obviously the love of God, but displaying his power, you know, the um, kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. That's what we always are talking about because it's, it's the thing that's going to shape this world. It's the thing that's going to impact the city of Austin that we live in right now um, to know God. Because I think they said like only 7% of people are Christians in Austin. I don't know. I don't know. Something, some crazy statistic like that. So if there's anyone watching right now that maybe came across this video, this podcast, and they're like, hey, um, you know, I'm into new age stuff. I'm into demonic mm-hmm. stuff. I'm just, I'm searching for all of these different things, these plant medicines, ayahuasca, just trying to like find who God is and who Jesus is. What would you say to them? So one, I would say, is there a person that you know right now that you're connected to that is walking with Jesus? And can you go ask them questions? That's, that was my in, right? It was the one guy that influenced me and introduced me that didn't go, we're all going to die. He introduced me to the guy who actually knew Jesus. This guy was brand new, didn't know the power of God. So that'd be number one. The second is if you feel like you've had a ton of seeds planted in your life, it's not that difficult. It's like I sat down and they were like, hey, repeat after me. First, Jesus, I recognize my sin, that I've sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I believe that Jesus, you lived, you died as a perfect man to take away my sins, to wash me clean. I acknowledge that and I make you Lord of my life where I submit my life to you. I believe these things that you did. I'm, I'm now granted access to the gift of the Holy Spirit that God gave us in dwelling inside of us. I now will become a citizen of heaven and believe by faith that that happened. I just, mm-hmm. I didn't know what was going on. Like, I was just like, do you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I was like, yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's acknowledge that you've fallen short and you've, you have sin in your life and God will reveal it to you even right now. Let's acknowledge what Jesus did, walked the perfect life, walked on earth, was beaten, broken, and hung on a tree so that you could be completely healed of all sin. And raised from the dead. And raised from the dead, which is the biggest part. <laughs> yeah. I believe you raised from the dead and, and, and give me everlasting life through that. And you can, you can experience that even right now. So mm-hmm. it's like if you want to reach out to a friend, reach out to a friend. Get plugged into a local church. Go talk to them. Like go experience this for yourself. Or if you feel like you're at the point where those seeds have been planted, go back and remember what Amanda said about him being raised from the dead. And listen to that over and just say it out loud to yourself and acknowledge God. It's mm-hmm. not it's not listening to someone else say it. It's you saying and acknowledging what Jesus did that he lived and died for you rose again so that you ha- you can have everlasting life and you can walk in the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the exact spirit that made Jesus ministry powerful. He mm-hmm. walked 30 years on the earth, got baptized in water, but then the Holy Spirit descended on him like a dove and that's when he started working and walking in a powerful ministry. So you can acknowledge what Jesus did and be saved. But if you want to walk out and experience the power that we're talking about, that comes from acknowledging it and then accepting a free gift, which is his Holy Spirit. Then from there, I read Matthew first. I was like, I guess. (laughs) Technically, I read Revelations first because they said that was the hardest book to read. So I was like, sweet. Revelations. Yeah. But uh, then I went to Matthew, just kind of figured out, okay, what did Jesus do? And Mm -hmm. and what, what do I have access to? Yeah. What's my inheritance? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people can believe in God, you know, but then Jesus is the the biggest separator. And and that's that's the person that that the devil fears is is the name of Jesus, is the blood of Jesus, because there is power in that. And when we believe in Jesus, we also get the Holy Spirit. Um, And I just my favorite verse that you've probably heard before, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes him shall not perish, but have eternal life life. And so it's a free gift. I think that's what's so beautiful about Christianity is it's nothing you can do. It's nothing we can do to be perfect, earn this certain thing. Um, There's a lot of religions out there that's just be a good person. Well, what is the barometer of that? What is the measure? How do you know when you're good enough, you're holy enough to get into heaven? Like there is nothing. The only way to heaven is through Jesus and he made that sacrifice for us. And so I think it's just amazing. So Your testimony, 
obviously I'm grateful because God saved you and now we're married and we have this incredible life together that he took you from darkness to light. And so if this is, um, you know, someone maybe in your life that maybe is, is dabbling into the, the new age, the witchcraft type of stuff, definitely send them this podcast. I think it, it would definitely, um, help them minister to them. Hopefully it inspires them to know that there is a savior that can take them to a, a freedom and a love that they don't have to live in this fear, this anxiety, this, this control that they have right now that there's actually freedom in the name of Jesus. So, so good. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of God's business. I wanted to get Nicholas's whole testimony of this kind of that, that nine months and, and, you know, getting saved out of being the demon kid and, um, just highlighting just how good God is. So thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode.